Hey guys, a little vloggish style presentation here, a little vloggish video. So how will this uh, virus have an impact in terms of development jobs, developer jobs, development jobs, web design, web development? Is it plus? Is it negative? Is it equal? Well, this is what I think is going to happen. Although I do not have a crystal ball, but I can lean on my experience going back 169 years. So bottom line is that in the short term, there will be a slowdown because people simply don't have money. But I think in the medium term and long term, this is going to be very good for development in general. So why do I think it's going to be good for development in general? I think that people are starting to recognize now the importance of social distancing. And they're going to start seeing how staying at home using telecommuting, if you will, you know, logging into your network systems via computer, freelancing, uh, dealing with uh, remote workers. They're going to start to see the advantage of that, something I've experienced uh, most of my adult career. I had physical locations in the 1990s, but uh, I did not like them and I got rid of them. The idea for so many jobs to go into work and to drive in every day to sit at a desk when you can sit at a desk at home is antiquated. And anyway, at the end of the day, to make this new modified version of our economy function is going to require the implementation of technology. I think another thing we're going to see is more and more entrepreneur types, more and more freelancing. This is a trend that started way before this, of course. Uh, baby boomers just in North America are retiring at a rate of about 10,000 people a day. And a lot of these people are looking to start their own businesses. And they're not technology savvy, so they're going to be looking for uh, freelance developers to help them out, help set up their sites, set up their apps, help them set up their social networking uh, uh, strategies, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity. But in the meantime, as it, as it, as it is now, there's probably going to be a bit of a slowdown. But what you can do now is A, build your skills if you're still learning. Do at least that 20 minutes a day of coding. Uh, important menu rate code. Number two, you can go out and find local businesses. Use Google Maps as an example and call them up. Say, listen, I'm looking to build my portfolio. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you update your site or help you build the site and I will not charge you. I will not charge you. I just want to uh, develop some chops and some skills. Remember, a lot of people would join boot camps, pay $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 to go to a boot camp because they say, ooh, the boot camp will get me a stash. You don't need a boot camp for that. If you follow the steps that I line up, that I describe here in other videos, more detail in other videos, there's plenty of opportunity for you to find stage work, basically you working for a company to help them with their, their needs, programmatic needs without, uh, you won't get paid, you won't get paid, but you're going to be developing reputation. You're going to be developing experience working with outside clients. That is worth a lot of money and it's worth doing. So this is what you can do now. Here's the great thing. If you reach out to help small business owners, local business owners, now, when things are tight for a lot of people, you're going to develop a lot of goodwill, right? You're going to develop a lot of goodwill and reciprocity is going to kick in, which is a very strong influencer on humanity. And it's just, it's just going to do well for you. And at the same time, you're going to feel good about yourself because you're going to know, at least I help people out during this situation. So let me answer a couple of questions that were put to me under the last video. By the way, I invite you, if you're watching this on YouTube, check out the comments. There's a lot of good comments down there, sometimes some very good information uh, from people who watch the videos, and it's pretty cool. So I get a lot of good uh, Q&A questions from the comments. So somebody wrote, what's your exit music, by the way? So the exit music that you see in some of my videos is something I actually put together, something I actually composed just on the iPad. and. Uh, yeah, I kind of like it. So a lot of people seem to like that, that, that track. Why did I do my own exit, exit music, unlike everybody else on YouTube who just uses, um, well, not everybody, but the vast majority use canned music. They use royalty-free music that they license. I wanted something that was my own, something a little bit unique, 
Somebody asked me to compare different web stacks in terms of development speed. I think that with all of these stacks, with the exception of Java, you're going to have a fairly consistent speed in terms of development time. Depending on the project, you're probably going to find that you know, Django might be more performant or more quickly, allow you to more quickly develop an app that does this. And PHP Laravel allow you to more quickly develop an app that does that. And Ruby and Ruby on Rails development will allow you to uh, less quickly develop than those previous two, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just kidding. Ruby's actually pretty fast. But anyway, um, Java is slow, though, because of the nature of the language. It doesn't take away from the quality of the language. Java has proven it was my favorite language back in the day, for sure. But it's just sort of so verbose. Just setting up the Java environment is a pain in the, you know, it's a pain. Versus the easiest to set up, of course, is PHP. PHP is just like trivial to set up. Uh, traditionally, Ruby Rails was harder, especially to get your head wrapped around it when you're onboarding people, because there's a lot of things you got to do. See, one big advantage of PHP with web development is that it is strictly a web development language, although you can use it for other things, but it was really designed for the web. And as such, it's the easiest thing to get, get somebody going with. To get a PHP, simple PHP page up live on the web is literally trivial. It's literally up, write up line of code, upload it to the server, and that's it, you're done. Whereas with uh, Python Django, PHP uh, Ruby Rails, and Node.js, there's a lot of configs you've got to do. But it's, uh, you got to learn. Now, in the long term, medium long term, that is not much of an issue. But if you want to onboard people quickly, PHP Laravel is, uh, well, PHP is going to be qu quicker. Not so much. Laravel, there's a lot to learn. Um, just in case you're wondering about frameworks, somebody asked me in a, in a live stream that I did early today on Instagram, somebody asked me about uh, web frameworks, whether it was worth learning, should you just do your own thing. I think that you become a web developer, you want to get into web development, you got to learn a web framework. There's no question because there's such huge productivity gains with a web framework. There is such huge gains in terms of security and how solid your code is going to be when you use a framework. The worst thing you can possibly do as a coder is to rewrite uh, code and libraries that already people have written already. The reason being is that there's no way well, it's very unlikely, rather, that your code base, your authentication layers and so forth are going to be better than something that uh, dozens and dozens of programmers have refined over a period of time. It's just not reasonable to think you would do better than them. And if you have this inclination, like a lot of new programmers, that you want to write everything from scratch, don't go there. Waste of time. Waste of time. Trust me, you can have plenty of code to write from scratch when you use these frameworks. Don't go back to 1995 where we had to do everything from scratch. It was a real pain and it was ridiculous. Now you can produce an app in a fraction of the time than we used to do back in the early mid 1990s or later. It's just so much better now and that's the way it should be. Let me just let you know that I have started about a week or two ago. I do one or two I've done about three live streams on Instagram, so you may want to check that out. I do q and A. I may open up with a subject. I've been doing it from my car. Um, it's kind of cool. There's a different energy when you're doing a live presentation. I'm thinking of doing them here on YouTube. You let me know in the comments below. If I get over 200 ups or uh, comments on, yes, do live streaming or live q and A sessions on YouTube, then I'll do it on YouTube. Otherwise, if you haven't already subscribed to my Instagram channel, it's only a couple thousand subscribers there, you may want to join there because I do uh, on more, uh, more likely right now anyway, but I do live streams there just because it's all hooked up to my phone. That said, I could hook up YouTube to my phone, which I might do. But uh, anyway, the live streams, a different dynamic. I may do more of those, you never know. Anyway, that's it for today's uh, special. Remember, special video. Remember, wash your hands, social distance. Uh, don't sneeze on anybody. If you are feeling well, stay home, stay home. One thing that helps me when I have a cold is a eucalyptus steaming. If you got that eucalyptus steaming, that helps a lot. 
my gym has a fantastic steam room at Eucalyptus. Of course, the gym is closed now, so I can't go. But yeah, avoid public. Do everybody a favor, you know, just t keep to yourself, like I said. And, uh, well, as the guidelines are out there, you know, follow those guidelines. We'll get out of this much more quickly if everybody just follows along and uh, we can get back to uh, doing what we like to do, whatever it happens to be. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you.